we've actually been tracking this particular plume of dust off the uh, uh, African continent for over a week uh, as it flows basically westward uh, across the Caribbean and now into the Gulf and the Gulf Coast states. Um, this is not uncommon for this time of year. Uh, these actually do come off Africa. Uh, that Sahara dust comes off the, the continent uh, primarily during the months of June and, and can last into July. And it comes in several different waves as you have strong systems that bring that dust up from the lower atmosphere and then it flows basically westward uh, with the trades, the trade winds. And what about this makes it more unique than some of the other plumes that we've seen come through? Because obviously a lot of people have been talking about it on social media, Greg, and it's, it's really been noticed by a lot of people along the Gulf Coast especially. Yeah, th this one is uh, pretty extensive in its aerial coverage, and it's also quite thick. There is a lot of dust uh, with this particular plume, and that, that's been obvious if you've been looking at the uh, satellite imagery over the last few days. You could really see uh, when it first made its uh, uh, arrival in, in, in Puerto Rico, the, the visibility was incredibly low, and, and so this, this dust layer essentially uh, much larger in aerial extent and deeper in the atmosphere, so uh, uh, that's a, a, an interesting aspect of this particular event. And there's actually another round out there that uh, if you look at satellite today, you can see that it thins out a little bit uh, over the southern Gulf. And then there's another uh, area of it that's uh, a little bit thicker uh, and another plume uh, that is coming along across parts of the uh, southern uh, South Atlantic. And I don't think a lot of people realize, but at this time of year, as we move forward into the middle of summer, we can actually see multiple ones within a week come off the African coast. Yes. Uh, and again, just like we see weather systems create thunderstorms in the plain states, uh, it's, it's episodes of, of intense wind uh, across the African continent that can result in these episodic events. Uh, and, and they're also associated with a, a, a deep layer of dry air aloft in the atmosphere. Uh, and so they can be sustained within that layer uh, for quite some time, as we're seeing with this one. And with the Saharan air layer, it does good things like inhibit tropical development. But unfortunately, as we've been seeing in our videos, it's also creating quite the bad beach day, but quite the amazing sunrises and sunsets. There's a lot of different impacts by this. It's really fascinating when you look at the uh the, the various aspects that the dust brings about. You mentioned the sunrises and sunsets because of the re reflectivity. Uh, the particles reflect the sunlight differently, so you have different uh, colors appear, uh, or more vibrant colors in, in the atmosphere around the time of sunset and sunrise. Uh, there are uh, visibility issues, obviously. Uh, the thicker the dust layer and as it falls out, uh, you can have uh, restrictions to aviation uh, due to restricted visibility. It does look, to some extent, like the visibility we're seeing today uh, along the Gulf Coast is, is a little better than what we saw in Puerto Rico. And that would make sense because as this plume basically moves west, obviously some of that dust is falling out. And so it's not as thick or not as dense as what we saw a few days ago uh, farther off uh, to the east. Um, and then another really interesting aspect of this is that it's almost crucial uh, to life in the ocean. Uh, there are nutrients with the dust that fall into the ocean waters and that nutrients feeds uh, 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 plankton, phytoplankton, and there's this relationship uh, also to fertilizing parts of the Amazon jungle. Uh, the dust actually contributes uh, significantly over time uh, to fertilizing parts of, uh, uh, parts of the Central and, and Southern America. What does it do for the weather patterns? Does it continue to inhibit tropical development? Does it take a good amount of time before we could see storms redevelop? I think it falls out relatively quickly, uh, again, because these particles are pretty large uh, compared to other smaller uh, uh, particles in the atmosphere. Um, and, you know, the, the dust will inhibit uh, solar radiation to some extent if it's thick enough. Obviously, temperatures will be a little bit lower than they would be with full sunshine. Uh, and then there are also the, the issues uh, with uh, uh, air quality as well. Um, and the other aspect of it that's a little more challenging to try to get a handle on is that these particles can also provide what we call uh, condensation nuclei for, uh, uh, for raindrops and, and storm clouds to form. Um, however, there's a, a feedback there, right? If it's too much dust, there's not enough radiation, there's not enough instability. So, so as it thins out, it's possible that you could see more cloud formation uh, and, and more uh, what we call cloud nuclei with this. 